Thanks for joining us. Today's project involves building an outdoor table to be used either as prep alongside your main grill or for a stand as a stand for your Blackstone grill. Um, it also allows additional prep space here as well as storage underneath. Uh, we built this unit on casters so that it can be easily moved by one person around the patio. So grab a cold beverage, sit back and we'll show you how we built this cool little cart. The first thing I did was put together a set of plans to for a table that was going to be the dimensions that we wanted, which we wanted a two foot by four foot cutting surface or uh, prep surface, and we wanted the uh, table to be counter height, which is roughly 35 inches. So to get that, we um, had to subtract right here. You can see that's 30 and a half for the height. We subtracted the height of our casters that we're going to put on there. So. Feel free to pause here, uh, take a look at this if you need it. Um, what we're going to, what we focused on here was the um, the dimensions of five different uh, five different cuts of wood. Uh, we added those up to for our material list to take to Lowe's, and um, we'll go into the the materials in the next frame. Please note that the dimensions changed throughout the project because of errors that I made on the front end. However, this corrected sheet shows what the dimensions were of the finished product. So those are the ones that you're going to want to use if you want to replicate this at home. So $160 later and we have our materials that we need. Uh, we've got seven 8 foot 2 by 4s five 8 foot 2 by 6s um, We've got some lag screws for our uh, casters. We have some wood screws, 2 half inch wood screws, deck screws for, um, for the rest of construction. And here are the casters that we bought. These are uh, four inch rubber, 300 pound casters. This actually represented about $70 worth of the, uh, of the project cost. So if you don't want casters, then you could reduce the, uh, the cost substantially. And I'm just gonna go and order down the list. The first thing we need are 36 and three quarter inch two by sixes, and we need four of those. And then I will not come back to the screen. We can, uh, we'll just go on down the list. In case you're wondering what's holding up our plans there, it's this 1993 Kawasaki Mule. Make sure to like and subscribe for more updates on the repair related to this project. Okay, so here we have pieces A, B, C, and D. The next piece we need to cut is E. And for E, we need to rip a two by four. Alternatively, you could purchase two by twos. Um, but first we're gonna cut those four pieces into 36 and three quarters, and then we're gonna use a table saw to rip those. And we'll set our table saw to one and three quarter inch to rip the two by four. Okay, and so there's our final E pieces cut there. And you may notice that we have uh, some leftovers there. Uh, one extra eight foot two by four and one extra eight foot two by six. Uh, so you could probably factor that in. Uh, if you didn't want to have any, uh, any room for air, you, you might could, could make do with, with less wood there. So now let's get to putting this thing together. Okay guys and girls, I've realized an error in my calculations and the length of piece B and D should actually be the same. So since we've already cut our pieces, we're going to have to shorten piece B to 19 inches. But if you really want the larger table, I would actually uh, change D to 21. So for us, we're gonna do that right there and proceed. Okay, so now we've assembled the A piece, the B piece, and the C pieces, which are the legs. This is the top or the bottom. They're both gonna be the same. And, okay, and the first thing that we wanna do is use our Craig jig, and we're gonna fold these down like this. And we're gonna use our Craig jig, and we're gonna set two this way, and then on the other end, we're gonna go two this way. Then, our top piece, we're gonna set it here like this, 
And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go two Craig jig this way and two Craig jig that way. Okay, so your Craig jig will come with a drill bit here and also has instructions for one, uh, an inch and a half material, which is this two by four. You're gonna wanna offset, you're, you're gonna wanna come back an inch and a quarter for the positioning of your Craig jig. So I'm just gonna use my foot there. Okay, and there's a nice little hole there for our screw. Okay, and now we have our Craig jig holes in all four corners. The only thing left to do is just to screw them all together. And if you need some help, there's a T25 wrench that fits that you can kind of get in there and just give it that one last final tight. Obviously, not a wrench, a screwdriver. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same for the other side. We'll just lay these down. And we'll construct this side with the Craig jig, just like we did this side. Okay, so now that we have everything screwed together, at this point, we can pull the front up, as well as the back. And now with the B pieces here, we can go in with screws here, here, and then on those other two sides. Okay, so that's the last one. Now, all we need to do is flip this over and then we'll put those remaining B pieces here and here. Okay guys, I've got another error that I noticed in my plans here. Uh, this right here, 36 and 3 quarters, that should actually be uh, 44 and 3 quarters. I'm not sure where that came from, but for these things, these pieces right here to, to run the length the, like they should, uh, they need to be longer. So, 44. Okay, and this is just a perfect example of nobody's perfect, everybody makes mistakes, and I made one. The uh, initial piece was too short. I made it to match this. The one that we just cut is going to be better. And these are this this will hold the slats that go across. So we'll have one on this side, one on this side over here, and then the same on the bottom. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. We'll 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 start with the bottom, and we'll just uh, we'll we'll line this floor with. Uh, the, you know the, the slat pieces and then we'll just lay this down and that will help us guide where to where to how to vertically put this okay and so you can see that we've put the two by fours here that will be the top of the table they're not going to be mounted right now this is just to show how high or where to mount these support pieces so we're going to go a screw every six inches or so into the side of this just to provide a good support Okay, so here we have the top. We have put in our support piece here. And now we somehow have to get this thing down onto 11 of these uh, pieces so that we can screw in from the bottom. We don't wanna screw in from the top because you're gonna see the, the screw face if you do that. So we wanna come in from the bottom. Okay, so we put our 11 slats in here. We made us a couple of half inch spacers. We're gonna to try to flip this thing over and then um, then we'll screw in from the bottom uh, so that there's no screw holes on the top. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, so that didn't work at all. Uh, scrap the half inch spacers. What we ended up doing was just eyeballing. Uh, we slid them in under here, eyeballed it, and kind of used a uh, flathead screwdriver to wiggle these things around until we were happy with the, the angle that we had on. Now we're ready to uh, put a screw into each one of these through the bottom. Okay, now that that's done, I'll give you a little sneak peek of the top. Nice, right? Okay, and now 
we're going to work on the bottom. And unlike the top, we're going to take the support piece and line it up flush with these side rails. And then our shelf slats are going to come in on top of this and we'll screw those in like that. So let's get started putting our screws in the side of these support rails. Okay, so the support pieces are in and we're just going to take a look at the caster and in doing so, looks like we're going to need a little bit of extra piece under there. And then so we'll just cut cut this piece off right here, put a couple of screws in this way, and then that'll give additional uh, support for the caster. Okay, so now we've got braces at all four corners ready for casters. I used three inch screws on those just because I had some extra ones and uh, there's plenty of room back behind those. So now we're ready to uh, flip it over and put our, our shelf slats across the, uh, across the bottom shelf. All right, kids, one more change here. This is actually a 12. And it's going to change. Um, it's going to change the number of slats that we need. Um, we need actually 24 of those. So 24 down there. So this right here. This is 24. Yeah. So I, I think the moral of the story is, you know, when you're making these plans, don't drink tea, don't drink beer, water, don't even drink kombucha, kids, because you can make mistakes and have somebody look over your work. But anyway, these things happen when it's the first time that you make something, so it's it's going to be fine. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish out. We've got twelve. We just had to cut more two uh, two more pieces because we were uh, too short. So here we go. Okay, so you could just snug all these boards up together. Uh, obviously, that would be the easiest thing to do. But in previous tables that we've built, uh, you know, we like to have a little bit of a gap in between these uh, just for easier cleanup and so that you don't have a uh, crevice that's collecting things. So with that, you know, we'll just kind of take a flathead screwdriver and it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just kind of creating a little gap here and, you know, trying to do it as, as uniform as possible. And um, yeah, so let's do that. not going to put casters on this, you're done. Uh, if you are, like we are, let's flip this thing over and we'll drill some pilot holes for those casters and get those things in there. Okay, so here we have our inch and a half lag screws. Uh, we're going to drill some pilot holes here and go ahead and seat those. revisions later we have ourselves a table she rolls you can run around it like this it's got plenty of room for all your stuff and probably in about six months since this is treated lumber we're going to come back and put an outdoor stain on it or a sealant on it and uh, then we'll be good to go so for now uh, let's 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 move it to its final resting place and then we'll so in summary we made a few errors along the way but we fixed them and I couldn't be happier with the finished product 
Uh, if you like this video, please like. Uh, if, you want, if you're interested in more budget projects, uh, you know the Kawasaki Mule one that I referenced earlier in the video. Make sure to subscribe so you'll get an alert whenever those um, whenever those new videos come out. So thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.